Heather McDonald has got the juices scoop. When you're on the road, when you're on the go, Juicy Scoop is the show to know. She talks Hollywood tales, her real life Mr. Segment, serial data, and serial sister. You'll be addicted and addicted fast to the number one tabloid real life podcast. Listen in, listen up. Woo woo. Heather McDonald. Juicy Scoop. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. I have the stars, the dynamic duo of the hit podcast, Dumb Gay Podcast, returning guests and actual friends. Actual. Julie Goldman, (laughs) Brandi Howard, welcome back to Juicy Scoop. Heather McDonald, happy birthday. It's not yet. (laughs) It's June 14th, but um, I think I should open this gift on camera. Oh, no, don't. Please don't. (laughs) Um, You know, a lot of people are going to start saying stuff that you guys are just buying me with gifts. Well, we started last year when we got you a very expensive gift. (laughs) Yes, which I'll be using because we're going to Cabo. I have a Louis Vuitton (laughs) passport holder. (gasps) Uh Uh-oh. This really... Okay. Oh, my God. The aviator. (laughs) Aviator Nation. Now, I look like a Malibu. (gasps) Tell him you lost your hoodie with us. Tell Peter. He doesn't know. (laughs) I I lost it. Left it on the plane when we were going to Phoenix Scottsdale and to also, perform. And once you leave something on a plane that's that cute, I'm sorry. It's the flight attendants after it's that. It's the people cleaning. I don't yeah. know. It's it's, oh. it's somebody walking by. I'm not accusing anyone. I don't blame you <laughs> for do wanting it. to keep such a cute sweatshirt. But we did try. I did have Julie fill and out I did, the paperwork. And also as a good friend, yes. I did fill out the <gasps> law. Pants, too! <laughs> this is your travel outfit for the oh, summer. Oh my God, wearing this on the plane. And by the way, can I tell you, I looked for shorts because she loves shorts. No, if but the I juicy like Juicy scoopers don't know. <laughs> but we're in June gloom. Yeah. So this is where we're at. Oh my gosh, how, thank you how very, very, is that very, be? very much. My birthday, of You're course, welcome. is a flag day. Mm. And um, my mother used to say, look, everybody put their flag out for your birthday. And then I'd look at the other houses that forgot to put their flag out. Oh. And I was like, why don't they know it's my birthday? <laughs> so that's that's where it started and hence where I am today. And now I had those kind of parents. Because now the American flag really does represent Donald Trump. Who we, all, have the, we have the same yes, birthday. Who also shares your birthday. I also want to say I was in Newport this weekend. And there'll probably be a big conspiracy theory about that because mm. there was some um, people cheering that's not why I was there. <laughs> I was there because we, um, well, for one, we went to the wooden uh, wooden boat festival. Oh, not the wooden boat festival. What is that? That big pirate what? boat. <laughs> Wait, but, what? That is where people have real wooden boats from like a hundred years old that have been kept in pristine. Um, condition and you just look at it for like, you know, 20 minutes. Do people dress up or no? No. It's not like But you can go on people's boats. No, you can go on people's boats and just admire them like a car show, but for boats. And then also, um, oh, first I just want to talk about important shit. Okay, so I'm going to be, the next two shows are Tampa and Orlando. Everybody come to those. Mm -hmm. But then Julie is joining me July 27th at Humphreys by the Bay, which is a beautiful outside can't wait. Venue. I've never been there. Taylor Swift was just performing outside oh. and she said, oh, now I can see people getting engaged. They'll, it'll be kind of, it will be light when you perform. Okay. It'll be light for part of my performance, mm-hmm. which is a, such a sexy concert summer vibe. <laughs> so like, so it's going to kind of like be like the Adele outdoor yeah. by the Griffith Observatory Yes, performance. it's going to be. A lot better. Well, last year when I did it, it reminded me of... Um, Carly Simon, when she performed at Martha's Vineyard, which was... Oh, um, good one. Okay. Well, maybe you should do an impromptu, He's So Vain. Um, Maybe I'll do that (laughs) because I sang last year. I sang, um, I know nothing stays the same. (laughs) Good one. But if you're willing to play the game. I think think He's So Vain Because it was like the golden hour. Yeah. So maybe I'll do He's So Vain. That's good. You probably think the song is about you. Yes. But it isn't. Well, you know, should we ever (laughs) want to, I'm just not... That I'm bragging, <laughs> but I do play the acoustic guitar fully. 
So How I many could. Years have you, I feel like you may have told me that, but I think that we have not explored this enough. I'm just as saying. artists. <laughs> I just as artists, I feel that we might want to okay. explore this since you enjoy <laughs> Let's the do singing. It. We will be on an app. I, I don't know. We, I don't I know. Think we I don't don't know. know. Wait, it's happening. <laughs> it's happening. I'm just what saying. I need to know is do you want to see it at the beginning of the show or do you want to see it at the end of the show? Is it a closer or, or an, an opener? opener? We don't know. I mean, the Heather um, McDonald folk experience. <laughs> speaking of which, performing. Now, this I talked about this with Pete Davidson on the last show where he had to end his show early because of hecklers and whatnot. Now, George Lopez had to do the same thing. He ended it 30 minutes early Whoa. at a casino and um, it was sold out. But it was just he felt that his thing is that he had supposedly talked to security about, hey, if this happens, you got to really be on it. Get the people out. And there people are like, well, it wasn't that many people. It was only four people. It wasn't 100 people. Listen, if it's even one and and it's throwing off the artist and disturbing it for everybody. It can't. so it was. He was probably supposed to do an hour and a half. He ended at an hour, but of course that bummed out the people that came to see. Yeah. And that is why, like, please do not get overly drunk and ruin it for everybody. You just did a casino. Yes, did and you? It was, no, they were perfect. No hecklers. No hecklers at all. Well, there's two they types of hecklers. Oh, there's mo- drunk, and I'm obsessed, and I think I'm in the show. Yeah, and then there's. Are we doing a, what are we doing here? It's like insulting. Yeah. Yes, yes. Right. And and none of it's great. Sometimes people (laughs) think they're a supportive heckler, but they're still a heckler. Yeah. If all of a sudden, or they're screaming out like requests. I think it's even worse Uh. because now someone loves you and you have to be like, shut the fuck up. (laughs) It's really, yeah. So, but listen, the Juicy (laughs) Scoopers have a sterling reputation. (laughs) And so just keep it that way. Because I really have been (laughs) extremely lucky in where I perform with the people that come and how great they are. So, are you, uh, excuse me, this, because Julie will definitely tell people to be quiet. Do you? Yeah, I have. And, but it does kind of get me like throw me off because you're in the middle of your story. And you're like, okay, they're they're chatting or they're saying something to me, and I'm and I'm kind of just like, hopefully they'll stop. And then at a certain point, I have to go, hunt girls. And then they get sad, and then I yeah. feel yeah. guilty, yeah. and I feel bad that I pointed them out. Mm-hmm. So, but I saw someone at Pachanga who came up to me and said, like as we were walking through, she's like, Heather, I'm so glad we got to come tonight because. Last year, you were at Humphreys by the Bay, and I went to something earlier in the day. I, had, I went to a Padres game, and I got too drunk, and so I couldn't see you. So we were making it up for it. But this is where that Juicy Scooper was a boozy, classy lady. She boozed it up, and she's like, I'm out. Right. I'm not going to come and pass out or disturb <laughs> people. I'm just right. going to be sad the next morning that I drank too much at the game. That's a classy that's juicy right. scooper. It's yeah, okay yeah. if you end up not showing up. I feel the same way for the holiday vacation people. If you're on vacation with someone and you're boozing all day in the pool, and maybe you're with the groups, and that night dinner's at 7.30, and you were boozing in the bed, and then you go to your room and you take a little nap, whatever. Um, let me tell you something. If the boozer person took a nap and doesn't wake up for the 7.30 dinner, Please leave them the fuck alone. <laughs> we don't need you to come. No. It's your vacation too. No judgment. We've all been there. Who cares? You know, and, and if it is a special night out of four, like, hey, the, I say, hey, uh, the Wednesday night is really important. That's when we're celebrating this. So, like, keep it in check that day. The rest of the days, who cares? Who yeah. cares? And if we've learned nothing from Housewives. Don't, yes. w- so don't wake, don't wake up. up Sonia. Don't wake him up. Don't, in fact, put Sonia to sleep. <laughs> don't wake up Luann. Don't wake up Luann. <laughs> put Luann to sleep. We don't want, or, or whoever, there, we could name a million. so many. Uh, like, and can I just, tell you the first time Julie, when we first met, yes. it was a big vacation with like a bunch of friends. Yeah. Of course I was drunk in the hot tub all day. Why wouldn't I be? Why wouldn't we you be? Cabo Why wouldn't you be? Through Mexico. Yeah. And it she had already like she already opened for Rosie O'Donnell like earlier in the week and she was great. Wow. Then she had her own Your your career has gone downhill. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Opening for me. And that's definitely true. <laughs> then <laughs> then she had her own hour and I was like, "Oh, wow. I'm excited to see like her hour." 
beyond. Like people the next day were like, we had so much fun last night. I'm like, and you are. <laughs> I like, so I missed it. And everybody was like, leave her be. And then I paid the videographer to like buy her set so I could see it later and said to watch it on DVD. But that's like the perfect thing of like, just leave the drunk bitch in bed. <laughs> You get them. You might miss the thing. Maybe you'll miss somebody's most important hour of their life. <laughs> but even yes. still, that yes. you still have literally peaked and then just a little <laughs> dribble down, and that's fine. But like, look, see what happened. See what yeah. happened. Everything's great. Yeah. But like, we need to leave but then also, the drunk. That person asleep. that likes to day drink. Look at the schedule. Yes. Look at the schedule. Go, and then go, you know what? I'm gonna keep it in check, or I'm not gonna have yep. my first drink till like five o'clock because yep. the dinner's at seven. And I want to be a delight, and I don't want to miss that one. Right. I wish that 15 years later I planned better. But <laughs> well, I still, yes, everything happens. <laughs> I'm learning. Everything I'm learning. happens for a reason. Welcome but still. to <laughs> Alcoholics Are Fun podcast. <laughs> We're changing the name. Yeah. Um, okay, so <laughs> let me tell you about my weekend. Oh, wow. With Marky Mark Wahlberg. Okay. Wow. I mean, I, Look my at this smile couple. could not be more... Okay, so she's this glowing. Is, I've never seen the mouth so so. <laughs> I'm too excited. It's, I'm it's, so. I'm sh okay. Let's just talk about it. Yeah. Um, it's been no secret that one of my favorite movies is Fear. It's where Marky Mark uh, de-virginizes Reese Witherspoon. Have you not seen this no. movie? It is available right now. I believe on Net Netflix. Okay, the classic recently, roller coasters. Ride the he, they go on a roller coaster ride and he diddles her do, and she has ah. her first orgasm. Uh, um. Then he crawls into her bedroom when her parents are out, and they have sex do for it. the first time. Okay. Then he turns out to he he's the sweetest little, uh, charming foster kid, but he's not. He's actually a really bad person. Oh, and oh no, but still hot, yeah. still hot. Such good acting, totally holds up today. So juicy, like it's so good. Okay? Alyssa Milano, like, was doing like she return was, to the screen. She's great <laughs> in it. The parent, the dad's all nervous. It is so good. I'm like shocked you have not seen it. Anyway, okay, well, it could turn you it. straight. Okay, so <laughs> anyway, <laughs> oh my god. So I gotta watch of course it. I've always loved that. And then he goes on to do all his things, and now he's you know very Catholic. Uh, he always does this pray up, you know, thing, and he's a delight. Um, very into the cold plunge, Love, a lot of cold oh, plunges. Cold. Loves an early workout. Yeah, doesn't yeah. he do like a crazy <laughs> yeah, workout he wakes schedule? Up at like three a.m. <laughs> right. Uh, does prayer, then cold plunge, oh. then eighteen holes by himself, oh, then a workout, then uh, works on twelve restaurants, then. <laughs> Goes Jesus. and builds a, a full blown movie studio in Nevada, in Vegas, where they live now. It's a lot. And anyway, so I got invited to the uh, restaurant opening in Huntington Beach called Fletch, which is his tequila. Beautiful, beautiful. This so, restaurant looks gorgeous. It really does look nice. So it was going to start at 5 30. And I was with a couple friends. We were staying at that Bella, uh, Belboa Bay place. Um, resort there in Newport and I go oh, this is what we're going to and I show them the invite and my friend goes oh it's three o'clock are you going to the four to five thirty special meet and greet with Mark Wahlberg I go what I thought I started at <laughs> five thirty you guys I that is not a washed hair that is <laughs> that is a lot of dry shampoo I didn't have time my whole plan was to wash it oh. whatever then I was like Peter, we got to get there before 530 to see if I can meet him. So why when we walk in, we see there's like a small line, like two people to meet him. So I'm like, we're just waiting. Let me just. And I'm starting to get real nervous, real, real nervous. What I'm going to like lead with, whatever. I don't know. I'm like, I'm just going to lead with being Catholic. Should, I, I've given enough to the church. It should pay off in this place. <laughs> so are we asking Peter to hang back? Or are we like Peter's going to film it, but he says, "Will you?" He goes, "But why don't you?" You know, oftentimes I can't hear what you guys say if I film it from here. So record on the voice memo, and that way, any conversation we have, if we want to use it to like interview him about it, whatever, I have it. So I had it all ready to go. Oh no! All ready to go to press the red button. <laughs> That's nice. And then he catches eye contact with me, and he's like, "Oh hey, I'm big." fan of your work and I, I'm like 
you know who I am. Like, I'm like, oh, you, uh, <laughs> don't press record. I'm like, I'm like, oh. And then, and then he's like, and then he goes, no, I love your humor. Oh and then you're God. like, Peter, See go. You later. Hey, security guard, stand back there. <laughs> that man's following me. Yeah. How do I you know who that is? Safe. The guy with the gray <laughs> hair. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, who is this boober behind me? Like, what? <laughs> and so he's super nice. <laughs> it turns out our kids went to the same school at one point. Wow. We're chatting and just total beyond delight. Now, I don't even know if you guys can handle this one. <laughs> he said that he'd very much like to go to the show in Vegas in September. <gasps> oh my with gosh, his wife. With his yeah, wife. But that's our show. I know. With Heather. I know. <laughs> Yes. I mean, we lo- I love. Probably not love- after this. <laughs> I probably talked way too much, and now it's not going to happen. But I hope he gets Well, now he knows you're married. He's like, I couldn't believe that he, he like knew who I was. See my videos, whatever he knows. And so then oh, Peter wait, wait. was you, so mad. He, Peter you're was saying mad. he lives in Vegas. He lives in Vegas now. Oh, okay. I so didn't know. So then he. So then he goes. Um, so then that was that. And then Peter was like, I can't believe you didn't record. I'm like, Peter. I'm like, what if what if someone came up to you and was like. <laughs> Peter, I'm familiar with your golf game, and it was the be- greatest golfer that ever lived. Do you think you'd be like, duh, duh, duh. like I'm like, I just whatever, who cares? So then he brings it up at least seven more times during the night that we're uh, having a good time. That you fumbled the voice. Yes, mama. yes. <laughs> and then we get into the the bedroom, our bedroom at the hotel, and I can completely hear what he said on Peter's video, where he said, "I love your humor," which I'll be sharing later today. <laughs> um, so it. It was great. So then we continue on. Oh, wait, here it is. Wait. Of course. I'm going to leave you yeah. the whole pot. Oh, of course. No, 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 no. I know okay. you work very well. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. A one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Awesome. Yo, I love your humor. Mark, very fine. Listen, I, I love your humor. I love your humor. I wanted to tell you, I, this reminds me of, and it's funny because it's it looks so good. one of Mark Wahlberg's finest roles. Look, Heather's getting hot. I she literally <laughs> just took off my For the on. YouTube people, okay, Heather's on, yeah. disrobing. Listening to, so Peter's there video, you know, taping you and him. Uh, yeah. And I can hear Peter, because while well, you guys are, Peter at one point is like, I, he makes this little laugh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, it reminded me of the scene in Date Night, the movie with Tina Fey, oh, I believe. Love. And, and Steve, Steve Carell, yeah. of which Marky Mark, Mark Wahlberg is in. Plays her ex or whatever. He opens the door, no shirt he on. He opens the door, no shirt. And she's like, hey. And then Steve Carell is like, <laughs> and that reminded me of, I don't care how tall Peter is and how secure that motherfucker was talking about. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like oh, amazing. You know where she is. I mean, you know, we definitely uh, both did not think. I just thought he thought I'd be another cute girl is take a, kind of cute, take a photo with. I didn't think it would. That is amazing. So, so Come on. Beyond. Beyond. So then I see another cutie. Oh my god. Heather's whoring around the party. Lopez. (laughs) What is happening here? Dimpled, also dimpled Catholic delight. With the pecs for days. Just could not be cuter. Every one of them looks, we don't know what their backhand is doing. I thought I saw Mar- Marky Mark's hand go down. And I was like, yeah, is like no, feeling no, her weight? No, no, yes, perfect but it gentleman. Just looks, look, you don't know here, though. Perfect gentleman there, too. And Heather's Thank like, you. fingering my butthole. <laughs> then good. I saw a bunch of Real Housewives of OC. Gina, who I know very well. And mm. this is the new girl, Katie. Okay. She's very pretty and very nice. And very cool. Okay. And so that was fun. And then I saw Gretchen Rossi. <laughs> and we did a photo. And this is no filter. She's oh. like, oh, you don't filter your photos? I go, no, I don't. But I think you look just great. And she did. She looked great. She looks great. She looks like she has a filter on. Yeah, she <laughs> but she really didn't. This is really no filter. We were facing the light, which is always the way to go. You look facing really sunlight. good, Heather. Yeah. I want um, people to know. Yeah. And then I saw uh, Vicky and Shannon arrive. They arrived late. I saw them at the valet because they were at a signing where old stars go to at the Burbank Hotel. Meaning at the What's Happening reunion? They There were all these reunions. Burbank Hotel in Burbank, California or yes. in the OC? <laughs> In Burbank, how, in actual well, Burbank. Why didn't we go to that? So I don't know. See, and where's like, the Burbank Hotel? They, so they were between the <laughs> police, are... police Academy reunion, then the Real Housewife duo. 
Shannon Bedore and oh Victoria. God. And Wait Victoria converted. Soap, did we not soap, know soap reunion. Oh my God, the soap reunion? Are you kidding me? When I tell you Julie loves... Do you love old... stuff like this? Well, you missed out. They were... I mean, I, do, I like these shows. But they, and it's just kind of interesting because these are all like the classics that you Mr. go Belvedere? and you sign the thing. And then, and then them who are currently on shows... That's but I just thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah. But whatever, who cares? I didn't. Even so um, then I went, came back to uh, my my home here, and we went to see Bruno Mars at our country club. Uh, why weren't we invited for your again birthday? Here's my my tag from my. Co- I did just say it was Bruno Mars, and a couple of people really thought it was Bruno Mars. It's a tribute band oh. called Locked Out of Actually, Heaven. Actually, I think we saw them. At your country club? No, it was a different band when I brought you. It was okay. a different it tribute. Was really, it was always a tribute band. It was a cool always band. lots of kids. They were good. And, um, we love drunk partying with kids. Yeah. That's the only people who want to hang out with kids, is drunk people, yeah. if you well, really think was, about it. It was a variety of people from very young to old. It was, But it was fun. That's fun. Well, I bet that so would have been fun to go to. Yeah. We're not going to get invited anymore. No. So that was- <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> we want to go to. I would. I mean, I love Bruno Mars. There is a more adult yeah, one later in the year that I'll. Well, what a Heather to. McDonald's week you had! I, I was a fun week. She's keeping her wristband on like yes. it was Coachella. I, I forgot. This is from the other one, but <sighs> anyway, Amazing. all of it was super fun, and the restaurant is very nice. And the locked out of heaven people that do the Bruno Mars tribute band is like, if you are looking for a band, I'm, I'm just being. A Catholic Christian saying that they were amazing. I have no say. I'm not secretly managing them on the side. Um, I am not 7M from the devil, dancing with the devil. I just said they're talented. That's it. I just need to know. Yes. Is the restaurant his restaurant or just his tequila? Or I don't understand. It's his restaurant. And then Dr. Paul Nassif invited me, which I, whom I've known for years, and he's one of the investors. So there's like a group of investors. Uh, and then it okay. is his tequila. And then he has some restaurants. And so this is one of them. And it's like like high end Mexican food with like real chic um, and very good food mm. and like a fun party vibe. Super fun party vibe, high, cool. higher end vibe. Yeah, cool. So now let's talk about this case that you have said you've heard okay. about since you're from Boston. Yes, but I'm not. But following. and I have not talked about it much at all. Okay. So this is going on weeks and weeks of a trial, and this is Karen Reed who is on trial for, I believe, manslaughter. They're not saying it's like a premeditated murder, I don't think, but, um, or maybe that's what, maybe they'll give the jury the option. But the prosecutor believes that she is responsible for her boyfriend's death, who was a police officer with Boston. Ooh. And what happened that night, and I'm just going to give the broad strokes because it's, you know, weeks and weeks of testimony. Happened that night is they, they've been dating for a while. He is a cop, but she is a professor at a university. And he um, is a great guy from what everyone says. And in fact, he has the guardianship of his niece and nephew because their parents passed somehow. Mm -hmm. And these kids are like preteen or younger. And they actually they testified. And when they testified, they made it said very nice things about her sound like they have like a very normal like you know relationship almost like a mom dad normal family relationship however there was one indiscretion where she flirted with this guy who was his friend by the last way you did with with mark Wahlberg. (laughs) well let's not hope that that. texting was involved okay and and i listened to a little bit of the um transcript i mean a little bit of the trial and he's like and they're having him read the text on the stand. And he's like, and then she said, you hot. You know, that hot. Like, yeah, hot. Was like, listen, like listening to the voice. Anyway, hot. They, had, they shared a kiss and her boyfriend knew about it. O'Keefe knew about it. But that seems to be the extent of it by all sides. That it was like a little bit of a flirty thing and they had a kiss. Okay. But it caused some fighting. Come the so. night of the death. They are drinking, bar hopping with a group of people. And there's an after party at this guy's house. And she says she, like, dropped him off. Or this is where it gets sketchy. She says, I dropped him off. And um, he was going to go in the house for just a couple minutes. And then he didn't come out. And she was probably very, probably buzzed. 
and was like, fuck it, and went home and passed out. When she woke up and she realized that she ha- he hadn't come home, she was like, what the fuck? Probably thinking, is he still partying at this house? She goes back to the house, and I still want to apologize if I am saying any of this wrong and the people are freaking out in the comments. I am just trying to tell you what I know. She comes back to the house and she realized she sees him in the snow. And they call the ambulance and they're trying to revive him and everything. And he does pass. Mm-hmm. So well, what'd she do? So put him in the snow and force him to stay down. <laughs> well, now, now this is where the prosecutor has some things. They say that right away, she's like, "Oh my god, did I like inadvertently back up and hit him when I dropped him off?" But then she had also said that she saw him go into the to the house. The house. But he has a lot of, um, and they haven't gotten to this part of the testimony yet. Like the real, there were facial injuries and stuff that. The defense believes he he might have gone in there, gotten some fights with somebody. These Boston cops beat him up and then, th- you know, threw him out in the snow or beat him up. And he walked out into the snow and they didn't realize how bad off he was. And he, you know, fell back, passed out. He's and a froze. Boston cop. He's, they're all on like the force okay. or work for the city. And then the other part is they were all kind of calling each other that night. But they all said it was butt dials. Like when they, but got we're going to take this records. woman down, <laughs> right? Because the Boston so, Police Department super level headed and doesn't. <laughs> I don't ever. know what you're talking about. <laughs> we aren't known for being racist. We aren't known for beating people. We aren't known for any of that. Okay, we're totally, totally above bod. All right, and then they all got together. Let's blame her. I mean, this stupid bitch <laughs> is already flirting with his friend, so she must have done it. How sweet is that for her to be like? Damn, did I back over him? Was it me? I mean, you I don't know, know what kind of fight they're getting in, but if they're drinking, they're already aggressive. They're cops. I mean, I'm sorry, but like, and they're in they're Boston. They're fighting about the Celtics. Fight exactly. Like they're fighting about <laughs> sports. They're fighting about the Red Sox. They're fighting about whatever and whatever. They're fighting about Ben and Jen. And ben, <laughs> yeah, Ben and Jen. <laughs> Who's bad? Who do you like better? Ben and Matt. What you fuck? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, like, whatever. Like, I'm not even gay like that, all right? So, like, well, by the right. way, I am performing at the Wilbur Theater in Boston, and Julie will be joining me. Yes. And Brandy will Listen, be there, too. Brandy Boston, and Julie both. Yes. Boston's my heart, okay? Yeah. It's my heart. Okay? I, I get it. So yeah. I get it. All but it is it. problematic. All but of I it. But I mean, it's a little all bit of, of like, is she, the, is she the... Um, they, wait, they call the more blue collar people townies, and what do they call the the people that are like not the townies, the educated? Jews. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you, can, you can edit that. Can't help it. Um, I don't know. Um, I don't know. <laughs> also, I Jewish. Didn't know also that, Jewish. I don't know if that was part of it too, though. Like, but it seemed like she knew people, and they they were fine. But are they, you know? And also with with police officers. No offense to the people that are married to police officers. Okay, but there is always there is a high level of infidelity yeah. and aggression and, you know, cheating and that kind of stuff. So it's it's all of that. But they're taking that one of the guys, he did throw away his phone and the SIM card. Um, I mean, come on. So <laughs> I mean, come on. Uh, but he said come that's on. because there was some undercover case that right, told him to do that it that night. Um you know, the butt dialing was was odd and which was all around like 2 a.m. or something <sighs> with each other. Um, Has she said anything about him being disliked? I don't know. And also, I don't know if she went and went back and saw, found the body or if they found the body. I'm not sure. Or if she called them and was like, where is he? And then someone walked out and saw him there. So it could be that they beat him up, put him out there, and this was their story. Or they, they, they beat him up, he walked out and passed out. Or when she – when he – he did get out of the car. She was buzzed and inadvertently hit him because her taillight was broken. And there was a taillight uh, fragments in the snow. But def- the defense believed that was all set up. And the last um, testimony was they showed the car. This is like very confusing, but they showed the car in um, with a broke. They're saying that the broken taillight was already broken. The defense was saying it was already broken from something else that he, she and her father like discussed was already broken before right. um, this evening. 
She likes and to drive like, buzzed. No, it broke. <laughs> it checks to what? Drive buzzed. Yeah. She broke that tail. Can't they go in there with like dust something and be like, this has been broken for six weeks? Or <laughs> Well, then they found a hair on the tail light, but that was after it drove on a truck for 60 miles in a snowstorm. So they believe that the hair was possibly placed there. So they think it's a lot of t- their defense is. These people have each other's Boston backs and they're tampering with evidence to write the narrative that she was buzzed and hit him and therefore didn't realize she hit him, broke the taillight and he hit his head or whatever and died in the snow. But once really where I think people are going to make their decision in the jury is when we really get into the forensics of his injuries and if they could all be caused by, by, by hitting by a car or being some, beaten up by like five different guys. Yeah. I mean, two questions. Mm. One, where are you watching this? <laughs> like court TV? I, I was listening to a lot of it. Okay. And then because um, there's a lot of like podcasts and stuff that will just play it. And then, oh. yeah, there's court TVs covering it. So we have no a lot documentary. Of different people. Not yet. OK, so we're going to get that eventually. I can't wait. Of I course. do need to dive. I'm into sure. This I'm sure anybody. I mean, it would be crazy if you had a documentary company and you were not following this and trying to get her. And then trying to, you know, what are what is the temperature online? For her or against her? I think most it appears to be um, on her side. You know? Yeah. Inle- unless you're me. married to a Boston cop, then maybe you'd be like, I don't know. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. Mm. Because, so, oh, they were saying about the latest thing of the car, they somehow, the defense was showing that it was like, switched around like there was it was mirrored mm. this thing so they they're saying that evidence has now been of the car i don't know and just the remember my cousin Vinny. what you know what i oh, mean your cousin Vinny. <laughs> just remember what happened in that movie the again? car there was this car that's they thought it seemed locked locked up with the car but the trans the same track a pause or whatever yeah, what's it called like positronic Posit- traction yeah. or whatever <laughs> just like the thing with the tires and the thing and the, the same tire tracks and it was all going to be locked up but with one little tiny pause attraction. Pause attraction. Was? Yeah, it was a pause attraction. And the woman, do you know my cousin? The woman's yeah. making the cream of weed and can't see out of her glasses. And there's a whole thing. It's the exact thing. same car. Talk about a movie that you should revisit. <laughs> right. Or like the Reese Witherspoon when she, in uh, Legally Blonde, when she realizes that Legally you blonde. wouldn't wash your hair after a perm. Exactly. Right. Yeah, with your Lassies and Prada shoes. Right. When he's drinking the water fountain. Or and she's in, like, the, in my favorite uh, case, which is The Secrets of Silver Lake. Um, where I do think that the wife who's in prison is innocent of knowing that her boyfriend killed her husband because I don't think she would help plan a murder of her husband the day before the first day of school. You're too busy. Makes sense. You're too busy. It's just not the yeah. day you want to do it. <laughs> makes sense. Yeah. It just makes sense. It's just, yeah. it's too much going on. You don't even plan to get your nails done that day. No. It's like, I've got to do that later. Yes. So anyway, well, we'll I mean, I can't that. imagine. Yes, I hope that we get our documentary like the staircased documentary Oof. where we didn't know if he did it or yeah. an owl or whatever well and I, we see her like before yeah like before all these um whatever happens we see her before going to court what she's going to wear who she's talking to you know and then of course there's criticism if she at all ever chuckles i'm like here's the thing <laughs> Jesus. whether you're up for murder or someone that whatever it is six weeks and if someone says something like Blah, 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 you know, whatever. And it just makes you, <laughs> does not mean that you are guilty, like, are guilty or <laughs> devil inside if for some reason someone sees you smile. Like it's okay to, you, to be completely stoic for six weeks straight would take a, or an incredible acting skill. You got ready and looked cute because you're on camera. Now right. you're right. right. trying it. Well, let's well, my also- sister says that she does coach. There's been times where she would be working on cases and it was like the appearance of a girl mattered in I'm that sure. you don't want to look too good. Right. You don't want to look sense. too pretty. You I'm going to bring it in, but Hunter Biden's wife could have toned that down. Um, uh, are you guys going to yeah. do juicy crimes? On this? Probably as, as more comes out. Yes, definitely. But also because we've got Boston. We've <laughs> got <sighs> cops. Right. We've got a woman who's attractive. not unattractive. Yeah. Who's playing her in the movie? Oh, who's playing the husband who was killed, and who's going to be doing the the boyfriend? Kind of giving me Sienna Miller a little bit, but that it could be so many different girls. 
I mean, they're, this is going to be a wanted part. We're going to have Boston accents yeah. galore. Yeah. And but you this know is they're where I also on. go. Okay. I, I got okay, it. Okay, who is it? Blake Lively. Oh, perfect. It could totally work. <laughs> perfect. She toned down her looks a little bit. I, she kind of looks like. Yep. Yeah. And now that Blake's a, like a little older, like I think this will be perfect. If I was Just writing the scripted version, not yeah. the documentary, yeah. I would do that Boston cop friends of the deceased. Yeah. Are prank calling her and being like, you don't want to fuck with us. You hit him in the snow. And she's like, let me just not get killed. Who knows? She might have kids. I don't know. She doesn't have kids. Okay. I don't God. think so. Yeah. But she's like, let me just do two years for manslaughter and not have the Boston Police mm. Department oh. on me. Because I'll go into like weird, like MAGA conspiracy theory. Nice. Ter- I'll go but into like she, But one. she is defending herself. So she's, and that would be one thing if she just said, fine, I'll take it. I'll say I was drunk. I'll say I inadvertently hit him and I'll do two. But this girl is not someone that's just like, you know what? I'll do two years in prison. Mm. Like she's not. She didn't grow. Like I feel like there are people, unfortunately, that have uh, people that go to prison in their family. And they're sort of raised to be like, hey, if you do a couple years for the good of the family, whether they're gang members or mafia or whatever – they're kind of taught like how to survive and it's not the end of the world. I don't think that's this girl's background. So, I mean, she's like, no, going to I can't do whatever it takes to be like, no way. But then the other the other side of the prosecution is like she had seven, seven drinks or something were accounted for based on like mm-hmm. talking to surveillance and where they went. So that was seven drinks she had. And then and then the the blood alcohol was tested in the morning, which would have been which was like, I think, 0.18. So it would have been if you're going to do the math, it would have been more at 1245 at night. Um, So, you know, there you go. So now you'll go to jail for two years for DUI. Mm -hmm. And so that the Boston Police Department isn't on your ass. Mm. I mean, I definitely from what you're describing, don't think she did it, but. Oh, it's juicy. <laughs> it really is. Okay, here with it. Karen Reed's lawyer says police manipulated video of her car after Sergeant acknowledges footage oh, is God. inverted. Just like, ugh. Speaking of which, no. Bye, Miranda. <laughs> no. She is suing, the real life Martha is suing is. Netflix mm-hmm. for $50 million. She, she is, is saying they did not mask her identity enough to protect her and she has been har- harassed. Since the show has aired and it was not accurate what they portrayed and then they didn't mask her identity enough and they are uh, standing by baby reindeer himself and they're saying if if no. you're watching on YouTube the photo of her kind of looks like she's on watch what happens live which I'm like kind of <laughs> into I mean if, of course she's being harassed she she admitted who she was like she's yeah. like here I am uh, yes. it's yeah. me right. And now you're being harassed. I mean, of course. Lady, you're a fucking <laughs> stalking <laughs> stupid bitch. Okay. Excuse me. Like, sorry that everyone sorry, now knows who you boohoo. Take your bullshit and go cry on a plank at the bottom of a pirate ship and jump in the water. <laughs> right. on the I mean, like, oh, I'm sorry. Does your privacy like, mean something to you? Well, it yeah. didn't all those other people, including him, that exactly. you harass. Like, so now you know about? how it feels. You went on Piers Morgan. You didn't need to do that. You've put yourself out there. You're a thirsty. <laughs> Troll. I cannot stand this lady. Like, you're going to sue Netflix for $50 million? I hope they sue you for $50 million, <laughs> you asshole. Like, I'm like not at, yeah, in I'm... any capacity. She is such a, and, and you know what? Maybe she's mentally, she's insane. She's whatever, 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 whatever. Like, that's what this is. This is who you are. Well, she was a lawyer. So for, not was, for nothing mm-hmm. at this point. Got fired for being kick, a kick, kick her yeah, down. I don't think she had a big salary that she lost. <laughs> kick her down fifty thousand or a hundred thousand for using her likeness and okay, call it fine, a day. And she'll be fine. like, okay, great, I'll go stalk other people in bars. Yeah, I mean, who is well, she going to stalk might, now? They might want to settle it, but I always think sometimes these people don't. Whether they're Bravo with a you know Caroline Manzo and and Leah McSweeney and all that, and they don't want to do that because then it like sets a precedent, right? And like, think right. about how much content they do based on, you know, people's stories and whatever. And we don't want to start doing that. I just feel like it's she's it's it makes me feel <laughs> like so um, 
m angry and like a caged animal. Like this guy who is who is who and I and listen for the from the movie watching, he's not even likable either. He can go on the plank too and jump in the water. However, right. sh what she did to him, how she controlled him, how she like violated him in every way. It just is another violation to go out there and now you're gonna sue and be the victim. You're not the victim, you victimized everybody and now I feel like a victim because you're out there asking for money. <laughs> right. And because in fact, Heather, I'm gonna sue you. Well, Heather, lady. we should sue Heather because she's the one who made us watch that <laughs> and we weren't going to. Say, um, <laughs> it is suggested that you watch this but not Mandatory. Uh, not mandatory by any means. Mm. And I'm Peter's at home. <laughs> and I and I also and I'll have to put you oh yeah, CC <laughs> on the the text or a group text someone else as a witness, just like, you know, when someone gets examined, they now like have a nurse present just yes. so someone can't say you did oh, something right. wrong. When you're in the yeah. doctor's office. Yeah, you yeah. You can't be alone what, with the doctor. Yeah, that I have to start worrying about myself now. Yeah. <laughs> um, well. well, wait till you hear this latest story. Okay. Kenya Moore of Kenya Moore Hair Care. Kenya, Kenya Moore Hair Care. Kenya Moore Hair Care. That's a famous scene from <laughs> Real Housewives of Atlanta when, um, who was the other girl? She's not Marlo. anymore. Marlo. Marlo was having an event for her, wigs. for her wigs. And then Kenya Moore showed up saying like, Wigs or not, you got to have soft edges or something. Well, not just that. She came in with a full marching band. And, she, <laughs> and took the, and took the spirit away. Well, now she, they're filming. Look how skinny she is. And this is what is alleged, but there is audio that's been released. Okay. So it seems like this happened. But what everyone's saying is they're filming the show. There is this new girl, this very pretty new girl. Who knows why they're not getting along? But allegedly, Kenya, in her presentation of what keeps your edges looking great, she gets up there and she's in this purple dress. And because I saw a little bit of the video and she accuses her of being an escort and allegedly even showed photos of her giving someone oral <gasps> while they're filming the show and while the person I believe was there. Maybe she wasn't. And so this goes, this starts going crazy on Saturday uh -huh. with people talking about it. And everyone's like, what, what, what the fuck is happening to these shows? Now we're doing revenge porn among women. And like, why, what, what would ever constitute someone to do this, whether it was true or not? Kenya writes on her stories. Don't believe what you're hearing and seeing. Da, da, da. The girl writes, I don't deserve this kind of bullying and hazing and like I this isn't true. I'm not an escort this or that. But then after they both put out that then the uh, then came her actually what appears to be saying it and everything. Now people there are plenty of witnesses that are saying it happened. Yeah. And I just can't believe that Kenya after being on the show for this long at her age would think that this would fly. Like, I'm just shocked that you would think, just I don't care it. how awful the person is, like, or what they did to you, or you're trying to take, they're trying to, she's trying to take her pretty shine or whatever, because this girl's gorgeous. I mean. It shows how far we've come from Jersey, which was probably in like 2011, where like the the whole Teresa shakedown, how Melissa was a stripper. It, we right. used to just uh, try like to buzz people yeah. for being strippers. Which was, and whether they were they not, and who cares, and fine, but like it sticks with you, and you're never gonna shake it, and you're a stripper now. Yeah. So you're now just, you can go down on someone and not be an escort. That's one. <laughs> right. But also that you'd have a photo of it is just really like, what? Yeah. And subjecting other people to basically porn that's not, that wasn't asking to see it. Right. Right. If this is in fact true. Yeah, but wouldn't that mean that either her or the guy who re released who, who it, released which is the, what, the picture? I, that I don't know. This that is person all needs that to be slapped I. In. That's all that's like out there, and like it's and gone you, too far. Right. Bravo and you, shouldn't and have let think, it be leaked, yeah, and they you, shouldn't let no. it on there. Right. And well, obviously, they're they're she did not probably share what her plan was for her event. She just said, "Film my event." This is what I'm guessing is happening. This is just my opinion. And she's like, "Oh, I'm going to get this bitch." Never ran it past anybody, except maybe the one guy that's helping her with her, you know, iPad. 
and then puts it up there thinking, oh, this is going to go over wonderfully, like the same way Kelly Osborne thought her joke about, and I ask you, Donald Trump, if there's no Latinos l- left in this country, who's going to clean your toilet, Donald Trump? And Ugh. I think she probably thought that was great. Maybe the guy doing her hair thought it was great. Nobody thought it was through. Heather Bajal keeps bringing it up. She probably <laughs> hates me, whatever. <laughs> But it was one of those things where I'm like, okay, you clearly didn't think this through, but I don't think any producers were in on it. Now, this will never see the light of day. So you don't think this will be on the show? Never. But maybe they won't show it, but maybe the aftermath of it. I mean, it's a reality show. The aftermath of her. Yeah, I want to see the aftermath. I want to see breaking the fourth wall. I want to see the the producers being like, what the fuck were you thinking? I want her being like, well, I'll just say it wasn't true on Instagram. Oh, shit. And then I want to see me on there talking about it. And then I want them to be like, now what do we do? We have to address. And then her just have to do either dig her hole deeper or totally apologize or say it was, you know, my hairdresser's idea and throw him under the bus. I don't know what's going to happen. But they will say that Kenya accused her of being like a sex worker. Which, again... Nothing wrong with being a sex worker today. No. It was a better, bigger deal in 2009 that Melissa allegedly maybe stripped when she said I was just serving drinks. Also, who cares? But like, yeah, now this now you're you're a feminist if you're a sex worker yeah. and you're the greatest person ever. Who It's your body. Do whatever you want. Like literally there. It's yeah. The slut shaming and the revenge porn is not anything anyone is down for today, which is good. Kenya's working overtime. <laughs> She's working overtime with with no Nini coming back and now mm. Portia's back. She's just like, let because you know the ratings, that was the biggest dip in ratings that Bravo right. ever saw was Atlanta last season. So now they brought Portia back, thank God. And so Kenya's like, let's just do the thing. But it's only going to continue to escalate and escalate and escalate until now we've got, I, you murdered someone and here's the receipts. Yeah, I've got the receipt at the reunion and you're printing it right. out from Twitter. You did murder this person. It's like, wh- when are we going to stop and just get back to the drama of like, don't fucking talk about <laughs> my extensions at my charity event. You didn't whatever. have my back. Yeah. Where's my back? Right. I don't know that we can go back. You know, it's just like, well, we'll get into the what's going on in New Jersey in a minute. Oh, here we are. New Jersey. OK, let's talk about what's going on in New Jersey in a minute. I talked a lot about it last <gasps> week. Um <laughs> The latest episode, which was on on Sunday night, was uh, the finale of of the episode. The final scene of the episode was the Fudas sit down with Louie and uh, Teresa. And the John Fuda is like, I don't know why you would bring it up out in the public. She's like, yeah, but it was out there. They're like, yeah, but you said it on camera that you'd bring out the fact that I was a drug dealer when I was a minor selling weed, which is now. But really what, where they're upset is that she brought his ex, the mother of their child, into the forefront who was convicted of crack that p- put him in a horrible car accident, who's now talking to these bloggers, which then are putting it on the Internet. And then they're talking about and they were like, why would you do that? And then, you know, the, here is the the girl, Rachel, who adopted the 16 year old boy. And they're just like, he's like, why would you? And then she's like. We did it because you came after Louie at the reunion. And I don't even know why he came after. So they're like, we, you know, it's tit for tat. And they're like, yes. it's different. Like, you're fucking with our family and our child's mother who is not right in the head and whatever. So they leave. They don't resolve it. So that's what's going on there. What are you thinking is how do you feel about the ugliness of people all going after each other's? Listen, Ugh. I would say they did bring up. Everybody was lurking in Louie's past. Everyone loved. Heather, you made a full video, and it was one of the best videos you've ever made. You had a full cast of, like, nine girls (laughs) where you reenacted. Well, that's right. It's so good. Let me just remind people. (laughs) I'm obsessed with it. It was my birthday weekend. So this is like, oh, my God, this might be the three-year anniversary of Louie going to this warrior camp. The men's. In Laguna. (laughs) And... But it was done. But this was a video from a couple years prior. And one of his exes put it out there or Mm -hmm. gave it to somebody Mm -hmm. because he sent it to her because part of the warrior camp is like, you know, take accountability if you were a dick to your woman. And they're all sunburned and he's sitting there with some other guys from the warrior camp and he's pouring his heart out to this woman and he's saying like, 
I'm going to come back. We're going to get married. We're going to raise our kids right. Da, 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 da. And, and what was funny about it, in my opinion, is you had guys screaming off camera for what uh, also no, they're, he they're should all behind say. him. Behind him, but there was a couple off cameras too that were like, maybe they were all saying, but they're like, tell him, tell him you're an asshole. I'm an <laughs> asshole. Tell him your story. Something like that. And so when I saw that, I did a parody of it with my girlfriends where I was pleading my heart out to Peter and saying I was going to be a better wife. I was going to learn how to make more than one chicken dish. Yep. And they were like, tell him you won't keep cooking that boring chicken breast anymore. <laughs> and I'm like, tell him you won't buy any more black shoes. I won't buy any more black shoes. I already have 14 pairs. That should be enough. Da, 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 da. And there's like, all these girls behind <laughs> yeah, you in like yeah. a pyramid. Yeah. Yeah. And they're like, yeah. 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 <laughs> It's so funny. And then, no, to do it, though, I did the, like, Jersey accent, and I put it on, like, another phone to have it, like, yelling, because they just had to keep their faces straight. The production value was, was, like, very high. It was high. I know, and everybody just wanted to go and float in the pool. I'm like, no, we're doing a sketch. (laughs) And then they're all there trying not to laugh. So I'm like this. Listen, so but people, yes, that, I people think, dredged up his past true. with his ex. Everybody was super happy to get the receipts. And Margaret, lover, hater, she is the queen, honey, like of getting everyone's business. She literally like brought to the forefront Jennifer Aiden's husband cheating on her, which wasn't even a, a, a poorly kept secret in Jersey. Very few people knew. Margaret put that not only into Jersey, but on camera. But now everyone's like, oh, Teresa shouldn't expose this guy for his past when that's the whole name of the game there. Well, you're right. I've kind of forgot about that. That's probably why Jennifer Aiden and Teresa are so tight and anti-Margaret. And then Margaret feels like they've come after her business. They've contacted her son. So it's very... And then, of course, Melissa and Teresa have never liked each other. Right. And um, But so the you can be on, you can be dirt, on any side. Right, but what up, I'm saying is yeah. Teresa says in the scene... I never throw the first punch. And if you really go back and look, you will see like she she attacks back. People went into Louis, of course. I mean, he's permanently sunburned from the (laughs) accountability video. Still sunburned. I don't know what's going on there. If he's like, he's got a blood pressure issue. I don't know. But it's like she this is what they all do. So to just go in on her. And I really like um Rachel Fuda yeah I like that girl I think she's funny and great and I liked her with Danielle and even with Teresa like and Jennifer Aiden's really funny I like the funniest people and Margaret's pretty funny too but it's like they're all funny and like fun to watch it's sad that this season has not made me laugh once not once because they're not even the editors aren't even trying to do like funny things in post you're right and listen and all of them have been nothing but lovely to me and totally nice. And, but I'm, I'm not on the show and hanging out with someone a couple times at a cocktail party. I'm not going to be like, not report on it the way I'm reporting on it. So I do think it's, I've said it before. I think it's gross that these, that, that social bloggers were used to put out stuff on Twitter that they then can read. And if they, you know, what came first, the chicken or the egg, that seems to be being revealed (laughs) So, um, but you're right. They're all guilty. They're all guilty. They're all guilty of trying to drum up some shit. And that's unfortunate because we don't want to see people go to prison. No. no we didn't we like don't. seeing Teresa go. No. We don't want to see people's lives be ruined and their marriages be ruined and their businesses no. be ruined. No. Like, no. But no. I really do no. feel like Bravo is scared shitless and that's why we're not having a reunion. And they're just like, we just Such need to bummer. put yeah. this like, this is too scary. Yeah. But I will say in the moment of that dinner, just if you're living in the moment, because the yeah. show is nothing but if we forget about the past, now we're just living in the moment and yeah. basing like who we like in that moment. I was not feeling John Fuda. Yeah, I wasn't. I didn't. I I, I wasn't feeling well, what it. I, what I didn't and get I is he kept really saying, "You have to like give me that. an apology," and she goes, "I am apologizing," and that should have been. And it. he's like, "That's not enough." Well, what, the, I hate that when that happens. When you're like, "All right," like you know, you actually don't want an apology. Right. You yeah. actually want to fight and yes. hate me. Yes, and whatever you're and not going to forgive I was me. Out. And listen to Louis's credit. He didn't say anything. Yeah, he literally sat there, and that guy is the most alpha traditional male you're going to talk to my woman like that type of guy. And he let that guy play himself out talking to Teresa like that. And I have to say, I I did feel, I felt that. I felt like you are wrong, sir. You don't want anything but a fight. And now you look like an asshole. I think their biggest thing is 
digging up this this obviously fucked up woman that struggled with drugs, alcohol, up. that has a criminal past, who doesn't have a relationship with her son. And, you know, as a st- you know, no one ever wants to give a stepmother like credit. It's always like the villain in the Disney thing. And she's been a really good mom to her child, mm-hmm. to yeah. her son, and she adopted him and stuff. And so it's just extra hurt. And like, but, and, but now, again, and now, and you know, and, and now that's true. Teresa's a stepmother. Margaret's yep. a stepmother. Like people should have some respect for that. But they Agreed. did that to Louis. Yeah. With Louis's ex. Right. Yep. They did the, their, and for, at this point, back to even the Atlanta thing with Kenya, you better just be acting like you're running for president if you don't want every single thing that you've ever done <laughs> right. in your whole life, one, revealed, or two, just lied about. Right. Like, even if you didn't do anything and suddenly you just looked like a stripper one night, you're a stripper, and now we're bringing in, hi there, what's that lady from Jersey? Oh, God. You know, she's yeah. like, hello, um, or whatever. Well, Kim D. Kim, Kim, yeah, right. oh. Kim D's going to come in. Well, how did you say, say you were a stripper, and you're like, no, I just dressed like a stripper for Halloween that one time. and But now you're a stripper forever. It's like, you can't go on these shows without, like, your whole past being, like, you – you know, anything you have ever done in your life will be weaponized yep. at this point. It is. And I don't know where they're going to go from here. I mean, I, I guess, don't know where they're going to go either. And I think that's why they're just like, let's not do the reunion. <laughs> let's bummer. let this settle. Let's figure it out. We're fucking scared. <laughs> Andy, Andy's probably like, I don't want Louie and Bo Deedle <laughs> going into my shit. I'm tra- telling the story being like, don't go into my stuff either. <laughs> like, who would have thought like, it? Like, I mean, year- what, everyone's just going to be scared. Like, I'm just saying, hey, like. Yeah. Can you believe the the name Bo Deedle is just <laughs> rolling off our tongues? Bo Deedle? I mean, and now everyone knows who Bo Deedle is. I mean, why aren't we talking to Bo Deedle on here? Like, Bo Deedle must be the most accomplished private investigator that's ever lived. I mean, the guy's I'm gonna like hire him when I need one. For, for seriously. Okay, so Teresa wore a Mugler bodysuit in purple. And um, yeah, there was... Um, some talk going on. Listen, I I have a big fear of camel toe, oh, uh, big fear, and too. that is why I will not buy any exercise pants that have a seam going up the crotch. Do you wear Lululemon? I do, but it's very hard to find where they. I'm wearing them right now, where they have a seam. Let's see the cam toe. No, see oh. the seam like this. It's. Oh yeah, no. There's she not doesn't be have one. There. But she they doesn't barely have one. make no them. And um, but it, being that I'm tall and stuff, the length will. So anytime I feel there's anything like that, there was a little thing that you could buy. Basically, if you're really in a jam, ladies, just take a panty liner. My panty liner that... sometimes will go up there. <laughs> so it's now. My, it's yeah, even, my shit will eat. Even, a panty like, liner. There was something yeah. that you could buy that that someone like made. A cup. Like a camel. I swear to God, yeah. didn't we watch on sorry on the rea- on one of the reality shows? Didn't Giselle? No, what's G- her name? Yeah, Giselle and Ashley G and A are making like a, a camel toe a thing. Sweat wick non. Wait, who is this? Giselle. Oh, and Ashley on Potomac. It's called G and A. Oh, because it's the same thing. Because the workout. It's yeah. a sweat yeah. wick non cam toe yeah. workout pant, which right. of course. We will all be buying. Mm-hmm. Now like, they're chat- look, It's like I'm going to shut it because I feel like who cares? Like it happens to the best of us. But I mean, I just well, had the, to talk the, about it because it was just. Yeah, I'm not a fan I of this. It sexy. I'm, I'm not fan of this outfit. But whatever, she's got a good body. Um. So anyway, they asked her on Watch What Happens Live. Um. Have you heard from Dina Manzo since her ex husband, and who was also brother in law to Caroline and actual real brother to Caroline's. Uh, husband Albie, uh, or not Albert? Have you heard from her since he was convicted? It felt like she was a little nervous with the question, and she's like, "Yes, I texted her, and she hearted it." I think she was being very honest. I definitely, you know, there's been talk that they have not been as close. Dina didn't come to the wedding. It could be that Dina didn't want to go to the wedding because of the lights and the cameras and all that that she has just left behind. But other people think that maybe something went on and they're not as cl- – whatever. Or or it was because Dolores also wrote a letter in defending um, the guy, him, the guy. Uh-huh. not in defending it, saying, oh, well, you know, he has a good character. He should be let out on bail. The letters were about being let out on bail. The letters were not 
now they may ask for new letters to before sentencing. But the letters that Caroline and Dolores wrote were let him out on bail, mm. which was pre-conviction, uh, which is not great. But it's and not going to age well. It's going to be like Nickelodeon. Right. And now the, <laughs> but now are they going to ask for new letters and who's going to participate in new letters? Because he's looking at, you know, decades of time. Because this is the guy that beat up Dina and her boyfriend. Yes. So these people are writing letters in defense of his character. They were writing letters asking for him to be out on bail. Okay. Like he's not now, a danger But now, right. well, oftentimes okay. defense will now ask for an additional a character's letters to say, this is why he shouldn't get 25 years. This right. is why we're asking for less right. time because he's done all these wonderful things. Right. So we'll see if they write for that. But hmm. it did seem... You know, but I also feel like, look, your job, unfortunately, is your life and your relationships. And when you have a rift in your relationship and you're a public person, women are very interested in that. So women are interested in where Dina and Teresa stand. So I think she definitely wrote her and I think Dina definitely hearted it where it's like uh, right now I'm not. I believe they're probably like, Dina's yeah. probably like right now I'm not in a place to fuck with you. It may not be forever. Just while you're filming the show, in light of that, I just don't want Shatter to start and I just want to keep it like, mm. Well, as someone who's been recently like, you know, we have been ghosted or right. whatever, I thought that was really indicative of like their friendship that Teresa reached out and Dina hearted it. She didn't ignore her. Right. She didn't pretend she never got it. She didn't do it in three days. <laughs> like, you know, Hannah Burner did. And we're watching old episodes of Summer House. Don't ask me why. Probably depression. Um, <laughs> and I think I thought that was cool that Teresa told the truth and that I think they will be back friends. And whether it's because of Louie or whatever it is, like, you know, I, I do believe in their friendship. I love their friendship. And I think that was big of both of them. Not yeah. to just be like, she doesn't like me now, so I'm not going to reach out. Well, and I mean, they have so many decades and she is yeah. the godmother and all that stuff for the youngest girl. So we'll see. But um, I thought this was crazy. This came from a juicy scooper. This girl is a new person on on um, on Dubai. And she Whoa. looks just like Jennifer Whoa, Aiden. I thought it was the same person. <laughs> yeah. And I saw it in a preview and I'm like, why is Jennifer Aiden in Dubai? Between... The, wow. The plastic surgery, <laughs> I'm telling you, it's it's really hard to tell people apart it nowadays. It really is. I saw it Emily really from is. OC really and is. I thought it was Khloe Kardashian. Like, for, Oh, yeah. I mean, she's giving like, maybe not now, but when Khloe Kardashian was brunette. I was like, whoa, she's, I mean, and looks great, but it, when I was When I was at um, BravoCon, I mistook people for other Bravo people. Yeah, I can't remember who it was, but I, I ran up and I was like, Dorit! And it wasn't Dorit. <laughs> and, no. and so it's like, I'm like, oh, but it was another Bravo person. It wasn't just like a lady walking around. I was like, yeah. it's very hard to tell, you know, when everybody's getting the lips and the nose and, mm -hmm. and this and that. It's like you almost have to like look into someone's eyeballs to be like, are do you who I think you are? Do you like them doing it or do you... Because we did watch Old Dallas too yes. and Carrie Duber, not that this is so deep, but Carrie Duber... Uh, has recently, she was a person on Dallas, has changed her face. She looks so different. Only unlocking too. But it was like, but I'm like, I wasn't like that. Well, let's say Jen Fessler. She did that Bravo makeover. Uh, yeah. Her first like reunion. Yeah. And I thought, well, whatever she did, I thought she still really looked like the essence of herself. Right. Yes. She kept it all totally. And I was like, that to me, that's what I like just because yeah. once you get used to someone and People can be pretty and not look the same exact way everybody else does. But what if they also did just like a 23 and me, like, and then you realize that like they were really related and you're like, oh, it wasn't the plastic surgeon. It was that you guys were related and you'd get into the same plastic surgeon. <laughs> your actual first cousin. Wow. And yeah. you're starting a clone army, <laughs> which is also weird. Um, J-Lo. No. Okay. She's wearing her diamond again. Of course, my theory was I don't think they're in that much trouble. This was to mask the fact that you had to cancel the shows. We don't want their marriage to be in trouble. We want marriages to stay together. But um, Megan McCain went on her podcast and said um, that she wasn't her favorite on The View <laughs> and that there was this guy that 
his whole job was to hold up a lighted mirror um, for when she got it, got ready. And I'm like, and? She's J-Lo and she's going on TV. So now we're criticizing people if they bring their own glam. Like, I'm so sick of, like, the diva shaming. Like, mm -hmm. is she hurting this person? Did they, did they find out that he was living you know, in a room and <laughs> Under a he was being human trafficked <laughs> to work and he doesn't really have papers and like, or was he a guy like really happy to be well, being a makeup, paid. A hearse, being a paid. makeup ar artist assistant working. who's 22 years old and being paid and working with the biggest person ever? Like, why is it always I'm with something you. like a negative? I will tell you, I have met J-Lo on three different occasions and every single time she was fabulous. Once... On the Chelsea Lately show, she was great. I touched her waist. I asked her about her skin. <laughs> the next time was at the Kardashians' Christmas party when she was with Casper. I talked to her about her tour and her Blue Blood cop show. Totally nice. Oh, yeah. That's and the last was ran into her at Saks, recognized me, and a delight. Wow. Now, I am not someone necessarily on the street, but like, I have not heard a ton of mean stuff. And I'm like, now, but now, like, also, you're on a show. Like, uh, if I, I just have kind of like just the, the constant, all the eyes on you and every single thing you do could be like deciphered. Yes. I just am like, relax a little bit. Like, you know, she's doing probably on a test show. You're probably the third show she did that day. I'm with you. Normal like, life. <sighs> first of all, she is paying that person. I'm sick of the diva shaming. Yeah. I did a commercial with Sofia Vergara. I was a bridesmaid. It was early in the morning. She's whatever she's doing. And it was freezing. You're and, playing a bridesmaid. Yeah. yeah. And all of a sudden we found out Brandy was actually in the wedding. <laughs> I mean, when they got married. Oh my God. Um, and, you and, imagine and, Janelle. Yeah, it's a commercial. Oh, yeah. And she has like a, a person that's holding like it's freezing. It was in December, the last week in December, like the last week you can work before Christmas. Yeah. And ungodly. It was like six in the morning. And we're in like spaghetti straps. And she's there and she has someone with the heater on her. And everybody, you know, around me was like, that's just fucking annoying. And that's just and I'm like, what? I would have a heater on me if I could. She's the star of this. Of course, she's coming out in a fur coat and then put the heater on her. Why are we mad at Sofia Vergara? What we're mad at is we don't have a heater. Right. Like it's of course she has one that doesn't make or in a different commercials like Julia Roberts has a certain time door to door. She lives in Malibu and she's like, I'm going to give you eight hours door to door. So and people are talking shit about her. And I'm like, that's like the most genius thing I've ever heard. They right. would keep her ass on set for 16 hours. Why is she going to do that for a Lancome commercial? She's not going to. She's going to be like, fill me for four hours. You're not going to make me do 40 takes walking up the stairs. I'm Julia Roberts. Like, these are things you get to do after working very hard. And you're not. It's wonderful and beautiful. Like, we're never going to talk shit about J-Lo. Megan, Megan. No. Now, I also uh, want to say, if I may add, yes. two things. Yes. One, I did watch Atlas and I did enjoy it. Okay. Okay. I don't care what anybody <laughs> says. Fuck it. Two, um, listen, with all due to our sissy Megan, okay? <laughs> yes. With all, and this comes with, with, with love because yes. we have said the view is now unwatchable without her. Yes. We have said it and it is. It's not the same show. However, Megan. As literally a person who has seen as, may I say, the most deeply unpleasant person who's been on The View <laughs> yeah. as a host. This is just a troll. It's unfair. It's hypocritical. You don't get to say that. You are combative. You are retaliatory. You are controversial. You are debate. You are a person who likes debate. You are a person who does what they can in order to make people feel very, very strong feelings. So if J-Lo pays someone to hold a mirror or put her makeup on who's not hurting anyone or saying anything to anyone or doing anything to anyone, this is just the height of hypocrisy. Megan, this is Julie. But talking. we love you. But and, we love you. And I will say when, but, she, I mean, come on. when she came on uh, Chelsea Lately, which was like the last season, I remember hearing that, you know, she was... Her people said, OK, we'll have her come on. The hair and makeup people need to be paid this much. And they were negotiating that fee because, you know, normally no one would ask for that. Well, you're not J-Lo. And, and if her people are getting paid, great. 
Good for them. Well, yes. And if it's and and if the, the network decides that it's worth it to have J Lo and keep her happy because she's going to bring viewers, which will bring ad money, then we can pay her hair and makeup people more. Like it's like it's the same thing. Like I'm sorry, are the extras also supposed to be in the trailer with Tom Cruise? No, I mean it's like there's something something that does not doesn't mean he. Yeah, if you hear that he yells at them and spits them in the face, we want to hear that. But like the constant of just like, oh, uh, no, we're not all equal. No. This is not how it works. Like this is a, a, a yeah. but we're, we're equal in the sense of you treat people with well, respect. You were at my wedding, Denise. You were at my wedding, Denise. <laughs> Meg McCain. Okay, you were at my wedding, Denise. Well, okay, the, the Denise person said something negative Made a about negative Megan. about her. Right. And come on, Megan, you 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 cannot. You just cannot be this person. I will I will not allow it. <laughs> so. But Megan when, McCain's trolling. She's cloud chasing, so she gets in the news and it worked perfectly. Uh, yes, like, yeah, but at I'm the same about, time, yeah. we're talking about people in a work environment who are getting paid to do certain things. As a PA, if I'm paid to run around, and I'm, I had a job right to take a guy's crusty oatmeal out of his car, okay, wash his pan he, in the pan, in the pan, in the pan, in yeah, the pan, yeah, and then take his car for a car wash and then bring it back to set as a PA. Do you uh, think that that's normal? That's not normal. <laughs> no. That's it, almost abusive. I had a <laughs> but, job for years where I had to literally take off the diapers <laughs> of shit and wipe the asses of men. No, 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 no. Do you not think that's disgusting? Yes, they were my kids. Yeah. But why? <laughs> it's getting hot in yeah. here. Let's take off all your clothes. <laughs> yes. Brady's referring to that was the hit song. And I would undress break to that every morning. Yeah. So you don't think I'm not violated as a woman? Of course. There is an equality. There's a qu- there's a quality and then there's <laughs> work. There's ridiculous. I mean, I'm sorry. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. There's ridiculous. But when it comes to treating people, I'm not, I am a big proponent for everyone gets treated with kindness of and course, respect. Of course. And in the, with whatever. But, you know, yeah, there's some jobs that seem like, oh, but we're getting paid. Right. And that's just what where it's at. And if, so if JLo wanted to pay me now, to Meg, hold the mirror, I mean, uh, go ahead. Meg, but also, Megan, has, Meg, Megan has nothing to lose. She's not on The View anymore. I get it. But I, I, I'm i also like, exactly, you're right. It's very hypocritical. And it's like, completely there, hypocritical. the story wasn't juicy enough to just say she wasn't my favorite. Whatever, you said it, fine. You're calling your dad's best friend decrepit and old, <laughs> bitch. Come on. We can't be doing it. We can't be doing it. We can't. Let's not do this. We're better so, than this. So then We're better this, than this. this popped up yesterday and my heart beat. This girl, <laughs> um, Morgan Monet, is doing a TikTok that was getting a lot of action because she was grading celebrities that she has uh, served. And she told a story about Jackson Brittany. In a what, restaurant? Yes, in okay. a restaurant. So I get the one sent about Jackson Brittany. And she is kind of funny about it. She goes, this is, a, this is a, such a Bra- Jackson Brittany story, but... Jax went to go pay. His card was declined for who knows why. He took Britney's card that went through. And then, I think we know why. And then he tipped well. And then he tipped <laughs> above twenty. Okay, so they got their money, but they were like that. She was joking, saying that's just a very that could be like out of Vanderpump pump rules. That like then of course he tips really well on her, but he probably would have tipped well on his own and whatever. I've been around Tom Schwartz and all of them, and they all tip very well to bartenders and things. So then I saw that I popped up and I mean, my heart, because I'm like, I don't know what this girl is going to say. I think I'm always a delight and I always tip. But God, it's I've been walking around this town for 30 years. I don't know if someone has a story. I just don't know. Anyway, it was a great story. I got a 10 out of 10. Oh, okay. She said that I was there for the Vanderpump um, for the Valley when he had his hair product thing. And I, I went up and I That's Sky Bar. And it was yeah, Sky Bar and it was an open bar, but I also but I also kinda asked questions. How does this work when there's filming and da 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 da? Do they also um t- pay, do they also tip you for your hours being here? Because does everybody know to tip when it's an open bar? Um some people don't. And you should if they're if, if it's allowed. Sometimes at a wedding or something, they won't have those cups there. They're like, don't do that. We've got it covered. But if you're at a party or something, usually you can give them money, a tip or not. Anyway, I did tip her, and thank God she said it. And I was like, "Whoo, <laughs> stay prayed up." I was like, seriously, I was. I don't. I mean, 
Thank God. So okay, um, good. But well, I was Julie- kind of like, I don't know if I worked at, and I and I like you, girl, because you said something nice to me. <sighs> but I'm curious if this blows up or after I talk about it. Is she still at the Sky Bar? And would the Sky Bar tell her, "Can you stop doing these videos?" Yeah, I mean, I don't think the videos are a great idea. Um, Morgan Monet sounds like a drag queen, I, so I do like her name. Um, Julie gave like t- like not, like two hundred dollars at at the Valley premiere night. They, yeah. That was an open bar, which was so classy. Of you know, meanwhile we give money because one we're too drunk and two we want to get our <laughs> drinks right away and we want to cut the line. But I will say with tipping, and we've been out to dinner with you t- a million times. You've treated us a million times, and you're always generous tipper. If, if Ever someone on this table doesn't do a good tip, that's simply because one was too buzzed and did the math wrong. Yes. Because you walk away like, bitch, I tipped 30 bucks. And it's like, what? <laughs> that was six hundred dollars. You're like, that's oh what my I'm God, saying. I thought Something that was so much. like that could happen. <laughs> and it could and, and it could be a, seriously a mistake. Completely. And I would hate for someone's that story to chase someone. Now, if there's 25 people that have that story, then then that's a thing. But I'm just like, in this day and age, like, God, like, one TikTok could, like, really fuck up someone's reputation. And it could have been a mistake like that. It could have been. Because yeah. for me, I would have, I worked at Swingers. Um, there was a ton of celebrities that came in there, a ton. And I felt like, uh, now we didn't have huge bills, like $600, but I was more offended by 15% on the dot because I was like, you really had to go out of your way to just give me four bucks. <laughs> yeah. Like you're waiting for me to bring you a dollar back and I got to w- get that out of my apron and give you a dollar instead of giving me a $5 bill. But if, if somebody goes way under, especially in an expensive restaurant, I think you can imagine that they just are buzzed and have a math problem. Sometimes it's hard to figure out the tip. You can't see. You didn't bring your stupid fucking reading glasses. <laughs> you're shining your phone. You don't have well, a young yeah. person to do the tip or even the young pre like handed to do it for me. And then it's like, and my, my dad used to do that. And I'd be like, I don't fucking know how to do the tip. Yeah. You know, if there's a million different reasons that can happen. But the I would think in, unless it's 15 percent right on the dot, like they either tipped you well or they made a mistake. But opinion. I mean, now the thing is like people talk about, like, you know, obviously they don't have this in, you know, uh, other countries and stuff. So not only are we tipping, we're tipping on every iPad, on tipping every other thing. But now you have to know that everybody that you're tipping has a TikTok account. And and you don't oh. know if they recognize you or not, which is also good. So they're getting paid more from people that are recognizable. But like, I was like, I mean, I just this is just. But anyway, I'm good glad for that it all worked out. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jax is getting bad reviews, his restaurant. And I want to say I had uh, two or three great occasions there and I liked the food and it was delicious. And the atmosphere. Yeah. So we had a I great don't time. know if the same people are the ones that went to Schwartz and Sandy's and wrote the mean Yelp reviews because they thought... They were bad boyfriends and husbands. They were bad husbands. Are they saying that because they believe that he's been a bad husband to Brittany? And then, and then there's also the same people that will run up and ask for a photo and then also go Always. see their uh, live performances, even Always. though they probably Always. wrote a mean yeah. yell and say you blocked me. But if they're writing Always. it mean to be mean to Jax because of how he treated Brittany, well, then they're barking up the wrong tree because she owns that bar too. Yeah, right. And right. you're it's only not helping. Yeah, yeah. Not and that's helping. just dumb. Just, dumb. just. I mean, Schwartz and Sandy's is good and fun, too. Great atmosphere. Yeah. Either Tom or the other Toms, like, seems to always be there. They're completely cool. I mean, I thought Jax's was a really fun spot. I did, too. In the Valley. And I love that everyone who's writing these things are just perfect people. Yeah. (sighs) They just have never done anything in a relationship. They're just perfect, perfect people who can judge something they watch on a show, which we all do. But to go out of your way. To hurt someone's business, that's where I go. Unless you know that this person like hit someone yeah. or or cut the vocal cords out of a dog's <laughs> throat or something such as, then like we leave them alone. We don't right. we don't hurt their business. We we let them live. Okay, so Billy Lee. I mean, some of the Vanderpump like sidekicks are 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 coming ablaze. Wow. So Billy Lee does, of course, has her podcast and she says Tom Sandoval has a new girlfriend and that new girlfriend, Victoria, is jealous that Billy and and Sandoval might be more than friends. And therefore, she turned on her and she said that uh, Sandoval and Victoria um, party too much and they don't wake up, wake up till five 
and that she's a bad influence on Sandoval. So then Victoria and Kyle Chan, who has his jewelry line, who's supposed to be Tom's best friend, they go and do a podcast together up and at him. And they say, I mean, it was hard to understand. I couldn't. Basically, they just said, Billy's not telling the truth. And um, and Billy, oh, they no, this was it. Kyle Chan says that Billy was spreading rumors or told Tom Sandoval that at one point, Kyle tried to drug Tom Sandoval to take advantage of him, which is also a storyline stolen from Real Housewives <laughs> of Atlanta when someone told Portia, oh, by the way, Portia, they wanted to drug you and have Phaedra sex with Parks. you. Phaedra Parks. I told Portia that. Told, <laughs> told Portia that. Candy. About Candy. And Candy was like, I'm not Bill Cosby. So now this is going on, but it's only on like these podcasts. And, you know, and Billy Lee is like doing these, you know, cryptic like videos where she's like, oh, baby girl. <laughs> Oh, baby girl, I've got the text messages from you. So bring it on, baby girl. Bring it on. (laughs) And I was like, what the fuck is going on? Tom Sandoval better know that all three of them need to go. Uh, Listen, everyone hates Tom Sandoval. Tom Sandoval, listen to me, okay? (laughs) I know what's best for you. This girlfriend's not for you. Kyle needs to be a little bit at a distance, because I don't believe that Tom Sandoval was like, hey, can you guys go on this podcast and talk about me? No. So if you're all going to go on other people's podcasts, if, if it really was a case, Tom Sandoval, I think, has his own podcast. Why doesn't he just have his girlfriend come on that or his bo- – I think he's done with the girlfriend uh-huh. who used to date Leonardo DiCaprio. And um, – oh, which, by the way, uh-huh. Tiffany Haddish just is doing this joke on, po- on talk shows saying that she – walked up to Leonardo DiCaprio and said, I would like to have sex with you only if you uh, stay in character of when you were nominated for an Oscar as in the uh, mentally challenged. Gilbert Grape? Yes. <laughs> Which you were underage and... Wasn't he a child in that? Well, actually? I think he was playing a child. Oh. Who was, Johnny Depp was his older brother, and the yeah. mom was six hundred pounds. And, and she's like, only if you do that. And she thinks that's a real funny joke. I don't know if that's the joke. Hey, if you told it to him and he laughed, and and you, ha- I just don't think that's the story you should be repeating. Certainly not but Tiffany Haddish. The, not she's all time. Not at this she's time. on the cover of uh, Hollywood Reporter. The Queen of Comedy is back, and everything. So again, it's comedy. It's comedy, but it's getting some controversy. So I'm just reporting on the controversy. I'm not telling you what I think or how you should think. Anyway, I think that all these people, like, it's fine. They all have a right to say what they want to say. She's on TV. We're talking about her, whatever. But the thing of like, ooh, I've got the receipts, baby girl, and I've got the text messages. Just like, oh, my God. Like, you know, and, oh, we said this off camera, and I'm going to share it with you. I'm going to share about it now. Like, is nothing sacred? Like, is no no friendship sacred? Apparently not. not. I mean, we have a whole Patreon called what Heather McDonald told us today. (laughs) So I don't know what. I mean, sorry, but it's just like. Do what you have to do. Do what you have to do. And also it's just the blatant, the blatant. I don't even know what the word is. The, like the blatant, just like, yeah, listen, what? It's like when Annie, Annie, that his assistant. Yes. Fucking. It was like, I just can't do yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, went and started her, her podcast and went and worked for Ariana and then did the podcast. I mean, as if I, it's nothing. I, honestly, as for, if the it's first, normal. for the first time, I am feeling sorry for Tom Sandoval because I just thought about and the assistant betraying him and now the Billy and the Kyle but is and, it the, all just and the him? girlfriend. It's, they're all talking about Tom Sandoval post. Now, are all I was going to say is the common thread, though, and does Tom Sandoval said again with love, looking at our hard truths, having to deal with our hard selves. Do we need to look in the mirror and go, why are all of the toxic people who are starting podcasts talking (laughs) shit about me have to do with me? Yeah. yeah, they're all connected to me. I need right. to I don't choose see, my my I, my friends, my friends wiser. wiser. I need to be smarter about who I'm in relationships with. I need to maybe stop. I for will a say, minute when the, just... when the Boston Police Department <laughs> seems less scary <laughs> than the people. <laughs> <swim. One problem. laughs> yeah, yeah, and then and also less confusing. Like we solved the murder in Boston. Yeah, and can't figure this fucking out. 
<laughs> I mean, like, you're like, I've listened, but I don't know what they're talking about. And Kyle Chan and the drugging. And it's like, OK, I mean, it's yeah. What are we doing? What are we doing? <laughs> what, are we doing? what are we doing? Uh, I, 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 <laughs> girls. Oh. Gonna, we have to wrap okay. this episode up. Baby girl. And <laughs> baby girl. Baby girl. Oh, baby girl. <laughs> baby girl. I'm, she goes, I'm on tour, baby girl. I don't have time to deal with this. And good for her. Good for her. I mean, good but, for her. But at the same time, like, you know, and then uh. who started it? Who threw, who, who did the first episode? And look, I've been part of it all, too. So, like, I get it, but. We all get it. Um. Tell I, everybody I blame that where they can get more Brandy and Julie in their lives. JulieandBrandy.com, where you can find all of our information. We have a free podcast, Dumb Gay Podcast, comes out every Tuesday. We have a Patreon, comes out every Wednesday. You can join for $4 a month. The wrong side of the takes, where we do p- opinions no one agrees with. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Not afraid. Not afraid. <laughs> and, of course, we'll be together July 27th. <laughs> That's right. And, um... Everything's at HeatherMcDonald.net and Patreon, too, and all, all the dates. And I'll see you in on the 20th and the 21st in Tampa and Orlando in June. Thank you.